today I need to get this uh, running, but the battery was dead. So I've charged the battery, already been out once. The battery was dead, I took it away and charged it. 6.24 amps of a drain and there's no key in the ignition. So I'm going to figure out why it's got a drain, see if I can fix that first and then see if I can get it to run. Well, it looks like I've got some sort of solenoid up here. It's in the dark, I'll get a light and show you better. But that wire that I'm round there matches what we're looking at. If I had two zeros, it'd be 700 then 7 amps. So. At least I know which wire it's on now. Just got to figure out where that's going to. Must be the ignition, maybe. I don't have any wiring diagrams or anything for this. This is a 1978. Uh, so it's almost as old as me, because I'm 76. So I've got no information on it. It's had somebody do some work on it before, and they got it running. Now I've got to come back out and just do bits on it to get it running again. So it's all fun. Once I fix the battery drain, like I say though, uh, I've just got to get it to tick over and figure out where things go. So that's my project today. I'll give it a few hours and see what I come up with. Now I'm at the front of the van. This wire going up to this block. Different, it's a different amp clamp. So this one I only move it one space over. So that would be six amps, nearly seven amps. Still high, but I know I've got that that way. So that's the way the power is going. So I haven't, I'm not on the ground side of it yet. I haven't got to the load that's draining it. Is what I mean. So. I've got to keep going. Back in the car, and I'm under the dash now. So the wire must make its way around here. That red wire eventually goes to the ignition switch, and because of the way I've got the amp clamp, I know it hasn't got to the ignition switch yet, because it's a positive number. If I had this amp clamp the wrong way around, like if I flipped it over, turned it over, that would be a, a negative number. I'd have a minus sign in front of that. So I know I'm still the way that the current's flowing. And if I follow that wire, it goes down here into this and up and then to the back of here. So then I'll just get on the circuit, find the wire that it's coming out of. The one that's powering it up out of there. No, I was slightly wrong. Well, I was not slightly, I was wrong. So here it is, that wire that I said that bends round and goes up here. Well, I'm right enough in saying that, that would have gone to the ignition switch. Except, it's where it's branched in here, the yellow wire, the small wire. It's this same one here, kind of like the yellow and the red joining together like you see behind radios and stuff like that. I'm on that one this time. Got the, the positive coming in this side. And I've got the same amperage here. So it's a times 10. So that would be 7 amps. So we now know it's this wire. It's looking at that. It's going up there. So I wonder if I switch. Yeah, I, sw <laughs> I switch that switch off. And that big drain went. So I don't know what that does. But that's it. I switch it off and on. So all this, I just need to figure out now what that switch does. If I was to go onto the lower side of this, down here, try and get it on that same wire, but I've got the amp drain. If I was taking that lower down, like down here, I'm on it now. Oh, I'm 
them around two wires, which I don't really want to do, but yeah, that's it. So I know, yeah, the switch doesn't do anything there. So if I go back onto that other one, I think it was this one, the yellow that changes to red. That's it. So I just leave that off and I fix the drain. Okay, that's good. Now I've just got to start the car. I'm happy with that. At least if I find out what that switch is in the owner's handbook, I should know why. Well, if I leave it off, it might be okay for what I need. At least I know to leave it off. This is how the other thing's wired in here, so it's not, it's not standard, so... I can leave it off, forget about the battery drain, just try and get it started, and move the car backward and forward now. And there are vacuum pipes not attached to this carburetor, I'll just show you. Oh, another thing, if you're using a light that's got magnets on it, and you want them to see what you're doing like that, you put it near the amp clamp, you're going to get a different reading on your multimeter because, you know, like that, I'm just moving the light close to my multimeter and you get false readings. So if you're trying to see what you're doing at the same time, make sure you don't have a magnet. So, yeah, I've got this, this one right down here. That vacuum there, where my thumb is, that's open to the atmosphere. The other one that you can see there, the vacuum for the other side of the carb, is going around here and makes its way into the distributor. So that one needs to be connected. I have other vacuum lines that are disconnected. I may have to plug that one up for now that was there trying to get it tuned up, but that's great. At least I know I don't have a drain. i just put that back on, make sure I've got it at the right position before I move on from it. Yeah. That's not coming on at all now, did I? Did I switch this off? Nope. So that's there. Why? There. It's minus now. I've turned the M-clamp around the wrong way. So if that's down, it's off, and that's fine. Okay. Nightmare's over with the drain. I'm gonna see if I can figure out what that is, but you see it's also had this thing set up here. It's a little loose and stuff, so... Yeah. I've got a lot of tidying up stuff to do. I don't know if I'm tidying it up or just getting it going for now. I might just get it going. I've come to start the car and it won't start. When you press the start button, it's not engaging the starter motor, it's not even trying, so I've took out that thing that was screwed onto the dash to try and figure out what's going on. I'll show you what I found. Here's what I found. This is the wire that we've seen, the blue one here. That's the one that was on the battery. I wasn't sure what that was going to do. This is the on-off rocker switch. So when it's on, the brown wire here, and this small brown wire, will become live. These two go into this start button on pin 4. One of those wires comes out, goes in a curl and goes to the bulb. So the bulb will come on when this is switched on. And then the ground side is the, the green wire, which goes into this brown wire. So I've got a same colour brown wire, one of them's alive and one's a ground, but if we look down there, see that on the bolt? Right there. That's where the brown wire goes to. It's kind of had a bolt head backed off and the wires have been stuck behind it. Right there. I'll see if I can get you a bit closer. There. So that's where the brown wire goes, one of these. So that'll be the one, presumably, yeah, the one that goes to the green. So that's the ground side, but the other brown wire, from here, goes to that switch. I don't know, oh, right, yeah, now I'm getting up. That brown wire, 
that comes out of there, the one that doesn't go to the start switch, the one that comes out of the rocker switch here, the brown wire, goes down there and it's had a fuel pump fitted. So that puts the fuel pump on when you put that rocker switch on. So we don't have any wire going to the start of solenoid from here, for whatever reason. It must have come off at some time during whatever. So now I've got to figure out which wire it is and put it back on. Now I'm figuring out what's happening here. We have the blue wire coming into the rocker. Comes out through the brown wires. Some of these brown wires are power. This one here is a ground. That one, if it's connected onto this plate here, next to the switch, right on the switch on the side, that will make the switch light up when it's on, which is nice. So that keeps falling off, so I need to tighten that one up. Then this small, very small brown one puts the power to this big switch. And out the other side of the switch we have this that goes to the starter. So they're not even close in, you know, wire size. But that's how it's been wired up. So this one is the power end for everything. Then through this small one, and then that to the starter motor. So let's see if I can get this going. And see if it ticks over. And then as far as rewiring goes, I don't know about that for now. I just want to see if I can get this running. For now I've reconnected this, you see how you tighten the screw and what they'd done is had wires just getting trapped in the end, a few strands of wire and they must have fallen out at some time. So what I've done is put a crimp connector, eye terminal, the yellow size so it's a good fit under the, the wire and put the screw right through it so it's not going to fall out now. And now I can get on with what it is that I was asked to do, just try and get this thing to run. Oh, now it's cranking. 13 volts, 14 volts from the boost charger. Yeah, it's dropping a bit whilst cranking. Are we getting fuel? We need to give it some choke. See if we can get it running. So I'm checking the control. Coil is at the top. Electronic ignition. Inside there's no points and condenser. There is a condenser and a Hall effect sensor. Uh, optical sensor, I'm not sure how it works, but it's like a three-wire sensor. It's got the power, the ground, and the other wire at the end is the, the signal for the coil. And it actually labels it at the top so you can see what they are. Battery plus, ground, and coil. Coil negative. So when I crank this, that light should switch on and off and on and off as I crank it. So I'll give that a go if the battery is good enough and this is a bit weak. And if that's pulsing, then we know the control to the coil at the top is good. But another thing I want to show you if I get my light. Okay, down the side of the coil there. See how it's melted? So something's gone wrong with this at some time. Could be a long time ago, we don't know. So if it's got a weak spark, it will be happier to run when the choke's on, that flap will be fully closed, which means it's getting less air. So that means less air is also less compression going into the cylinders and it's a richer mixture. So that's two things that are going to help it. It's easier to spark if you're not in an engine, if it's out of the engine, than if a spark's occurring inside a combustion cylinder that's under compression. So with the choke on, we're actually helping it to spark. And it's running richer whilst the choke's on, obviously. Because it's got less air. 
So, this doesn't run when you push the choke back in, and that's the issue, we need it to run on its own. So I think that's it. If this pulses, then we can check the spark. If we don't have a good spark here, when I check it, it's, um, it's going to be the coil. So if that pulses, we can then check the coil. Same again. Okay. Ignition's on. This one is for the fuel pump and this is for the starter. Okay, so I didn't like that. This was charged, this top down Toretto. Um, it's not going to do it, so I'll have to get a bigger jump pack. I bought this one just for this job because I needed something with more power. The other one's 2000 amps, this is 2500. I'll see if this cranks it. It's flickering, it's flickering, so we can see it flickering. It looked like the bulb is flickering, but it does to me here, but on the camera maybe not. I'll maybe change it for a scope so you can see it switching on and off a bit better. This top wire here is the power, the one that says power. Out of those three, right, that top one says power on the other side of the lid, over here. The center one says ground. And the bottom one must be the trigger. Must be a Hall effect. And that's coming in from the bottom. That's the Hall effect sensor with the pickup at the bottom. Okay, down there. This is inside electronic ignition, inside the distributor. Electronic ignition and the coil sits on the top of the distributor. So, the right, looking at this, the orange wire, one that looks the most orange here, is the one that says power, which is this end, the top one as we see it. So, that's the power going into that uh, set. Of, the Hall effect at the bottom. Then we have the ground is the center wire, which is black. And the black one ends up going straight down to a screw. Down here. Down there, next to the condenser. So instead of points in a condenser, it's um, electronic ignition in a condenser. And that'll give a cleaner switch on, switch off without any arcing. So that's the ground, and that's all it does. It goes straight to the ground there, that center wire from up here. So we could bypass a lot of this and just go between a ground and the bottom wire, which would be the signal, and see if we get a spark. So this wire goes to a ground. If I touch the bottom one, up here. And it's not sparking all the time. I don't know if you've seen any of them. Uh, that's a problem, very weak spark. So it's easier to jump the spark when it's in the air than it is when it's in the See like that? It's so weak, I've almost got to touch it with this tip to get it to spark. If I move a little bit further away, I'm getting the spark there, and then there, I'm only like a quarter of an inch away, and it's not doing it. It's right about the point that it... There, it's stuck. There, no, there. I'm almost touching it. Almost touching it. So I think the condenser's gone because we're not getting a nice clean arc here. But we're not going through the condenser now, to be fair, so.
that also makes sense. Okay, so I touch that. I'm getting a, sp a better spark there than down there. Yeah, this thing really drains this really quick. I'm just going to disconnect it for now. And down to the last dot. That's okay. It was enough to see that we've got a weak spark. I couldn't have done this without that. Unless I took the battery home and charged it. Okay. I've stopped that. The battery's just died, so we'll go back. Yeah, I'm not getting too... There. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, back to one. So there it is. We've got a really bad spark coming out, but it's getting control for each cylinder. So what we need to do is change this bit at the top. If I turn that off, if I change this, Delphi Remy. That's it, that's the problem, the top bit. If that comes off and we can get it separate, we're okay. That's all it needs. Because internally, the Hall Effects is working okay. So we need a good spark before this is going to work. Ah. Okay, so we know we've got a bad spark. We know we've got control. So I'm going to go and see if we can get plug leads because some of them are a mess where they've been rubbing against the um, exhaust manifolds and the plugs. That's not the real issue right now. What I really need is the coil. So we'll try and get a coil that goes on the top of the, the distributor. So if I can get a new coil and plugs and leads, do that. Should be able to get it to run without needing to be on choke all the time. I may need to still adjust it, certain things like the um, ignition timing a little bit, or the, the CO and the mixture screws in the curb. So I, I do have a bit more to do once I get the parts, but we need to get the coil first. We may as well do the plugs and leads looking at the state of them. There's a little update with what I've been doing. I've been here a couple of times now, a few times trying to get this going. Every time I come here my battery jump pack was dying or the battery on the car would die. So I take it away and charge it and I get a few cranks and then it's dead. So that's another issue that it may need a bigger battery with a little bit more reserve in the battery's capacity in the cold cranking. Because uh, it's just not quite enough to try it a few times. It would be okay if the thing started and ran, ran perfect. But if you have to keep cranking it whilst you're doing tests it just kills the battery. So that's the next thing. Anyway, thanks for watching.